Listener discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to the I Should Totally Be Dead Right Now podcast, where we tell true stories of survivors of true crime, natural disasters, and everything else in between. Does that sound weird? Did I say natural disasters weird? You did a little bit. Okay. I think there was a little bit of slurring. Okay, should I keep it? Yeah, let's just roll with All it. All right, okay, Fuck sounds it. good. Ah, that's fine. Uh, welcome back, and... Yeah. We've been having some delicious fall drinks. Yes. Welcome to fall, my favorite season. Is it your favorite season? I love the rain. I love the cold. I love sweaters. I love the pumpkin spice. I'm not going to lie. I do love the pumpkin spice. Mm -hmm. And holidays are around the corner. It's just good. My goodness. It's just good. Don't forget about Halloween. People get really upset about that. I know. Yeah, whatever. I'm I'm the type where move past Halloween and just roll right into Thanksgiving. There we go. Agreed. Sorry. I just, ah, <laughs> I love Thanksgiving, I love Christmas, <laughs> which is the reason we're drinking Yes, apple cider. What are these? Caramel apple cider drinks. Yeah, they are, we made these cold because while it is fall, it's yes. actually still a little bit warm outside. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Even though we had a warm. deluge today, my God, it rained so hard. Mm-hmm. In the morning it did. Oh, good Lord. Anyway, so we put... Apple cider with caramel vodka, mm-hmm. and turns out delicious. it is delicious. Two ingredients, you're done. Yeah, and it's so good. It's perfect for fall. Mm-hmm. You could probably do it easily warm. Oh In yeah. In fact, maybe we should try that another time. We should. Oh, so good. Because we... at Starbucks they have that caramel apple cider. Oh my god. You put some vodka in that, or the caramel vodka, and make it more. Caramely, I don't know. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Mm -hmm. And then you also had that apple pie Baileys. Ooh, yeah. We took some shots of the apple pie Baileys. (sighs) Highly recommend you can just drink that straight over some ice or just shoot it. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that was very good. It was, you know, I was like, it can't be as good as Five Farms. But turns out it was oh, pretty really? darn delicious. Yeah. Shit. I'm sorry. I know. I don't know what to say right now. I dropped I'm a surprised. bomb right there. You did. <laughs> okay, Five Farms, you better watch your back. Bailey's is coming. You better come out with your own apple pie. Mm. Oh, yeah. These are super delicious. and Very drinkable. Yes. Mm. Very drinkable. So our next episode is going to be our two-year anniversary. <sighs> I can't even hardly Oh, my gosh. It. I can't even. So... Watch out for some cool stuff. Maybe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're going to do like, something. We uh, we have to do something. So These bitches aren't quitting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're still going. We're still going. We're still going. <laughs> We're still drinking. We're still telling the stories. I mean, yeah. I don't think we'll run out of survival stories. I think shit no. happens every day. So. As it turns out. I know. I was even <clears> looking <throat> at current news and thinking I could tell a few stories from it. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. All right. Should we just go? Yeah, go for it. What do you got? What do you got for us, Caitlin? Well, excuse me. (laughs) Da 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 da. Sorry. I like it. I did it wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Me, 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 me. There it is. Okay. (laughs) House of Wonderland. Thank you. So, okay. First, a quick update. My sister is home. Oh. Uh, Her house is still there. So, everything is fine. The fires near her house are pretty much under control. So, we're thankful about that. I actually went to the coast this weekend, oh. and we stayed in Lincoln City. I thought we were going to be staying in Newport, but I got the name of the hotel completely wrong. <laughs> Fucked it all up. <laughs> My God. We couldn't have our dogs with us. It was Aww. just sort of a depressing weekend. I mean, we were still at the coast, and it was great. But we went through the town where your sister lives, uh-huh. and I think I was expecting more just things burned to the ground there wasn't in that no it was like you drive up there was one area where it was clearly used to be houses oh, and really? those were no longer oh, so okay. i mean that's horrific and awful but for the most part it was all very green mm-hmm. and i was like oh it's not so bad so we figured it happened more away from the free or the highway there was one area that was still smoking oh really so yeah it was still smoldering right oh. there next to the road well, I guess that's good because, I mean, that whole highway was shut down. So I just never knew, like, what was actual damage was. But, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's not too bad from the road. Right. I'm okay. sure it's worse later. 
So that kind of ties into my story. So oh. I did do, I did, this is a good survival story of the Oregon fires. Oh, okay. So even though my sister just survived, thank you, Alyssa, for, you know, you gave Not some Not destroying our, our lives. <laughs> some of our listeners were like, Alyssa, tisk tisk. I'm like, I know, I know, <laughs> oh but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was so stressed out. Yeah, for your, she, I was just uh, thinking, like, what are we going to do for your wedding? Would you even have a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's right. Yeah, if she died? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. I was I was horrified. It was like, oh, I just have the worst imagination. I, mean, I guess I didn't even think of that. Would I? No. Would I? No. Would I? <laughs> probably not. No. Probably, I probably not. No. It'd be too depressing. I'd probably move it. I would have to. It's in six months now yeah yeah no. and she's soon. marrying us so okay no sorry Thank i you know for putting that in my head michelle gosh no, that's why i didn't say anything like i was okay. trying to totally play it cool but You're in right. my heart i was <laughs> losing my fucking mind all right okay <sighs> okay i'm sorry it's okay i'm sorry i brought up her dying before you yeah that's <laughs> oh, God. wow cut all that <laughs> No, <laughs> people need to know your thought process. My dire thoughts. <laughs> oh. All right. <clears throat> okay. This story is about Don Myron. Don Myron. Yes. Okay. So Don is 56 years old and he lives in Little North Canyon in Oregon. So near Lyons. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is in fact where Joel grew up. Oh, is, really? In Lyons anyway. Maybe he knows him. Hmm. Okay. They all know each other, like, in those small little towns. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, over Labor Day weekend, so we're in the beginning of September. Okay. And one of his sons, Chris, comes with his girlfriend, and they were just visiting him for the afternoon. They were hanging out by the river. And, and later in the afternoon, they, they left, and Don was like, this is just the perfect day. Blue skies, weather, nice, cool. All right. But things quickly went to shit. Oh, Because... No. <laughs> The sheriff's office sent crews out to suggest residents to evacuate. Don thought this was just a precautionary thing. Mm. But to be on some sort of safe side, he spent a few hours watering everything around his property. Okay, smart. So it is now 8.45 p.m. And Don just got off the phone with his eldest son. A little conversation, great. So... During that time, though, Don started to see smoke, but was still not worried because, you know, it was just a little bit of smoke. He knew about the fires. Mm. Blah. Maybe it's just the wind has shifted. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. So Don is hanging out, and he hears a huge thud on his roof. And this is around 9.15 p.m. now. Oh. So just 30 minutes after talking to his son. He went outside and saw the sky was now orange yeah, and that yeah, yeah. a branch fell off. So Don runs to the end of his driveway and both sides of the river were engulfed in flames. Oh my God, that's so fucking terrifying. <laughs> he states, from there, everything went into overdrive. Don frantically grabbed a few belongings and jumped into his truck. He started down the road and he came to a fallen tree on the road. And now he has a flat tire. What? Oh so, God. <laughs> He turns around and is still driving on this flat tire, and he is blocked off. He cannot get out. Oh, that's, like, so scary. <laughs> right? Oh. Done. So he knew he had to get to the river. He made it. He did make it to the river, and Ugh. he went up to his waist. He headed down to the place where the river widened. At the banks, he found three green plastic lawn chairs. Huh. And... He also finds a case of rolling rock. Fuck yeah. All so, right. This fire's not going to be so bad all of a well, sudden. Well, he checks it just, you know, just to see. And there is exactly one beer left. Oh, so, I thought he had a whole case. No, nope, he got one. He I, takes it. And I would take it also. He takes the chair as well. So Don uses the chair to protect himself from the embers. The wind speeds were estimated to about 70 miles per hour or 113 kilometers per hour. Oh my gosh. Was that the night that we had the high wind? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. all the warnings? Yeah. That was... And then the next morning we woke up in Mordor? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So he, you know was using the chair with his little rolling rock in his hand. Oh, my God. That rolling rock would have been downed in one second <laughs> and upset there wasn't more. So he finds a rock formation in the middle of the um, waterway. To avoid inhaling too much smoke, he puts his shirt over his mouth. 
Oh, that's smart. So now Don lies down on these rocks and with a chair over him to protect the falling embers that are oh, um, okay. happening. And while he drinks his one beer. <laughs> Probably savored it. Yeah. He stayed there all night, and by 7 a.m., parts of the fire were actually out, and it gave him a safe path to go back up to the road. Oh, gosh. Don. <laughs> he went back to his car to see if it, there was any damage, and his car was still there. Oh, wow. He sat there for about an hour, just in shock about what has happened. He then wanted to check on his house. Mm. As he's going up the driveway, his neighbor's house was still there and not harmed, but his was totally gone. Oh, that's hard to hear. Right? Oh, Don, I'm sorry to hear it. He walked back to his truck to spend another day waiting to be rescued. Mm. So he was just assuming that no one's going to come because, you know, it just happened. <sighs> well, probably people can't get in there to mm -hmm. rescue him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, actually, around 2 p.m., emergency vehicles were able to reach the area and found Don. Mm. He states, let me tell you that was an awesome sight. Thank God I ended up in the wide spot of the river and away from the banks. Because I'm sure the banks were completely on fire. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. His two sons embrace when they heard that their father has survived. They're not surprised that he survived because he's like... <laughs> He's fucking going to survive no matter <laughs> yeah, what exactly. type situation. But they uh, went off to reunite with their dad. Ugh. So they were planning on just going there because they haven't heard anything. And when they got in the car to go get him, to look for him, the girlfriend got a call and she's like, they found, you know. He's so, alive. Yeah, he's alive. Exactly. Oh, God. So Don didn't have any major injuries. He All pretty right. much came out of it unscathed. He did say that he needs to buy his neighbor a new thing of chairs or <laughs> a new chair at least. I'd be like, nah, man, I'm keeping it. <laughs> Your house stayed, mine burned. <laughs> Let's just call it even. Right. Eh? But also, so this is pretty much the end of it. I mean, he's doing well and stuff like this, but um, Rolling Rock actually heard about the story and wants to send Don a whole bunch of free beer. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, there's a silver lining after all. I mean, a new house maybe, but I think he's staying with one of his sons, you know, until he oh. can get back on his feet. Yeah. So it's devastating to lose your house and all your belongings. So I don't know what belongings he did get in his truck, but hopefully, you know, they're the meaningful ones. I'm glad Don survived. He was smart, but still a scary situation to be blocked off with fire oh. all around. Like, I, I couldn't. But good on Don. I mean, it's a... A recent story and I'm happy that he survived. I know in Oregon some people did pass away in the fires so that's very devastating. I know there's a um, lot of people unaccounted for still. Is there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh so I know. heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking just to see I mean even going through to the Oregon coast I mean mm -hmm. just that one housing complex there was one house still there, and then all the others were just completely gone. Mm -hmm. Ugh. God. What would you save? I'm looking at all your Alice in Wonderland stuff. <laughs> I probably wouldn't take any, honestly. Maybe one of the teapots, because that one's an old one. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. I know. I um, But, I mean, I, I have probably some, wouldn't have time to... I don't know. A whole bunch of Lord of the Rings stuff. And <laughs> it wasn't... And then all my puzzles, of yeah, course. Right? I was like... Do I save those, or do you just look like an asshole trying to save your puzzles? Well, Alyssa saved her Legos, so... That's true. I, I think, would have been pretty think, devastated. Yeah. I think pictures, definitely, you know, my social security and birth certificate, stuff yeah. like that. I did have that in a pile ready to go. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think those are the ma major things. Like, if I did have more time, maybe some more stuff. All right, Michelle, Next. let's hear your story. My, all right, all right. So, this story... She was inspired to write into Reader's Digest after reading the story that I told a while back. Okay. About, it was, what, episode 41, okay. where the little boy got the arrow in his eyeball? Yes. So yes. this was inspired by that. Ooh. I figured I started the summer with this. And you with that it? one, and I'm going to end it with another Arrow story. Wow. So, okay. Spoiler alert, I guess. Yeah, you should. Oh, my God. Another oh, great. arrow. All right. Well, this story is about Donna Barber. 
Okay. And I think it's probably around like 2014. Okay. But I don't know for sure. So Donna, on this warm April evening, was out gardening. Okay. And she was just sort of, she had had a long day at work. She was contemplating what she would make for dinner for her and her husband and was just sort of chilling out, Mm -hmm. you know, doing a little yard work. And so she decided to go ahead and start the grill for her and her husband to have a little dinner. So she's heading towards her patio to start the grill. Okay. When she feels like she got hit in the side of the head with a baseball bat. Oh, my gosh. And she doesn't know what the fuck happened. Okay. And all she knows is she is in excruciating pain. She's completely confused. She's got all this shock and horror. And then she realizes that she had been shot by a bow and arrow. (gasps) So she had a arrow, like, just hanging out of her neck. Out of her neck? Yeah. Oh so. my gosh. <laughs> Wait. Okay. When was it? Like what time of day? It was the evening for evening. dinner? Yeah. So it was after work. So it was probably around 6 p.m. It has to be deliberate. I mean, it's not like well, she's in like in the woods just chilling. No. Okay, she's got, she's, she's going like for the grill. in a suburb, you know, yeah. where there's other houses around. So in her confusion, confusion, she sort of realizes that she has an arrow in her, in her neck and so she grabs a hold of it. Don't break it. No. Is she going to yank it out? <laughs> That's, isn't that the, like the one thing you don't do? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I know. I, Hi, sorry. Caitlin. <laughs> so she runs into the house and she's screaming her husband, his husband's name. So Ed, her husband, was in the back of the house chatting on the phone with their daughter. Uh-huh. And he drops the phone and runs in to see what the hell is going on. So he grabs her by the shoulders and sort of lays her down on the couch. Okay. Because she is like running and screaming and just like, Ed, Ed! (laughs) I imagine just holding this arrow in her neck. Yeah. So he laid her down on the couch. He called 911. And she just laid there and prayed and just sort of assumed that she would not be coming out of this alive. Like, she just didn't see how she could possibly survive through this. Is she losing a lot of blood at this time? Or is she just like in shock and just like, I'm going to die? I think it's a little bit. She is losing blood. But I don't think it's like gushing out. But I think she definitely is in shock. Well, still, yeah. I probably would be like, I'm going to die too. (laughs) For sure. Agreed. So the arrow had come from a young man down the road who was practicing with his compound bow. So. Okay. He, fortunately, he was using a practice arrow, which is rounded and smooth at the end and doesn't have like an actual oh, okay. arrow that with a notch on oh. it. So it just like went in and to pull it out, it wasn't going to like make an even bigger I hole see. like right in her neck. But it was still strong enough to puncture. Yeah. So apparently the arrow ricocheted. It was heading north ricocheted and headed back south which is where donna was hanging out in her backyard is this a cartoon like no (laughs) (laughs) fucking road runner right going after him so it went over two possibly three fences and through shrubs and an oak tree between two large hanging baskets and right into her neck. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The shot from the compound bow apparently can travel up to 200 miles an hour. Whoa. Or 300 feet a second. So I that no thing was hauling ass. So, bing. I'm assuming <laughs> it hit off something metal. <laughs> Oh, Donna, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it happened. I mean, that's a precision shot because she's walking towards the grill. It's not like she's standing still. Yeah, no, it was complete fluke. Wow. No one could have anticipated this okay. happening. So the EMTs arrived um, and they sat her down. They were perfectly calm and they were completely focused. So they called from help. Oh my gosh. Mm. They called for help from paramedics and a medical helicopter came from Armorillo, Texas, which is about 65 miles away. I guess I never said where we are. We're in Texas. Okay. Great. <laughs> so, super. Do you know how old she is? Did we say that? No, actually, I don't know. 
Good question. Well, she's old enough to have an older daughter that's out of the house. Yeah, I'm going to say she's probably in her 50s 40s. or 60s. Okay. Maybe. That's a total guess. I say 40s or 50s. Okay. Donna's going to write in and be like, bitch, I'm 45. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm 32, bitches. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Donna. <laughs> Oh my god so uh they needed to take her to the to armarillo which is where the trauma center was oh okay. so they get on an ele- or an helicopter oh my god wow helicopter that's a nightmare for me <laughs> an elevator helicopter that was the last story that was the last story oh that was a fucking nightmare story Actually, when she got sort of in the air on the helicopter, she Uh said she felt completely at peace. Oh. She had so many people praying for her that she felt like it had to come out. Okay. So she was feeling much more hopeful than she had earlier on the couch. She has that white light around her? Yeah, that's what I like to think. Mm. Okay. (laughs) At the hospital, her family and friends were all gathering. She tried hard to reassure them, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be fine. But apparently the looks on their faces said that they were not buying it. (laughs) Oh, really? Things looked pretty, pretty shitty because she had this arrow sticking out of her neck. okay. So, so she was the hopeful one out of all this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's like, don't okay. worry, guys. It's I'm fine. fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just a scratch. Yeah. It's probably gushing blood. Uh, so they took her back for a CT scan to determine the location of the arrow. Okay. And so the doctors and nurses started telling her how lucky she was. So there's a space between the carotid artery and the jugular vein. Okay. And it's about a quarter of an inch or less. Wow. And the arrow went just in between (gasps) those. So just a little bit to either side, and it could have pierced her jugular or her carotid artery. Oh, my gosh. Which would have probably made her bleed out before the police or... The police police came. They kind of came, too. Maybe. (laughs) They were all there. Yeah. Before the EMTs got there. Good Lord. Oh, what she said was there was actually hardly any bleeding at all. So oh, okay. So all these visions of her just bleeding out were not Didn't true. Didn't happen. No. I see. So she realized just how lucky and blessed mm-hmm. that she had been. So she got taken back to surgery to remove the arrow. And she had two rooms that were full of family and friends. Aww. Like two waiting rooms full of people just pulling for her and everything. So she came out of surgery and she was doing fantastic. Oh, wow. And so all was well. And then they, something came back from the CT scan Uh that they were not expecting. (gasps) Cancer? Turns out she had a brain tumor. What? And because she went in because of this arrow, they Uh were able to discover this (gasps) brain tumor and she went in like a month later and I guess it was like a pretty bad brain tumor. It was like in the middle of her brain. Oh my gosh. And so they were going to have to do some like major surgery. So <gasps> she got out of the hospital and started immediately seeing specialists and like, and they're like, yeah, we got to operate like Whoa. as soon as we can. So turns out because she had the arrow in her neck, they discovered the brain tumor. We were able to remove it. It looks sounds like it was about, I want to say it was a few months later. So a few days later, she went in for a second opinion from a neurosurgeon about this brain tumor. He said the surgery would be difficult, but it had to be done. Yeah, absolutely. The tumor was about to cross the midline of the brain, which would have resulted in a massive stroke. <gasps> I know. Oh, so the brain surgery was successful and less than a week she was back home. She felt discouraged and was actually feeling pretty horrible. She had lost a lot of blood from a bacterial mm-hmm. infection. She had Okay, here oh. we go. Okay, I yes. can do it. Colostridium def- defica Ugh. We you just listened to the I word. Know. <laughs> We just looked this shit up. Do you want me to, you want to listen Defic- to it again? Difficulty. What was it? Do you remember? Like Lee. I thought you said like difficulty or something Difficulty. Like Colostridium difficulty. It, we'll just stick with that. Okay, that, that sounds, sounds amazing. Good. Yeah. And she was extremely anemic and weak. So she was beginning to have symptoms. Of Wait, what does that mean? Oh, good question. I don't even know what that means. We just looked it up. I thought you knew. No, I, I just wanted to, to know how to it. say it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll look it up. We'll okay. look, you're going to look it up? Yeah, well, yeah, because now everyone, like, what is that? So we're looking up what colostridium difficulty is. 
I'm just going to keep saying that. Colossodium defficile. Because now you can say it. Yeah. And they're like, bitch, you still said it wrong. <laughs> but we Googled it. We listened to what they said. That's true. What is it? Inflammation of the colon caused by the bacterial... Oh, so she must have just had a bacterial infection all through her blood. I see. And inside her body. I see. Well, that sucks. Well, she was feeling just wretched. I, well, yeah, that's, that sounds <laughs> awful. Okay. And she was also having some symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Thankfully, uh, her PTSD did not last very long. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Still sucks, but oh my gosh. No, indeed. So she needed to take some time for herself and for rest and relaxation and healing most of all from her adventures <laughs> yeah <laughs> she likes to say so she would go back every year um, for an MRI to make sure the tumor is not growing back yeah but then in 2015 she had another MRI uh-huh. and the doctor wanted to come in have her come in and see them so they explained while there was no sign of tumors they had found a brain aneurysm oh my god I know girl oh so normally aneurysms aren't discovered until they rupture yeah. and at that point it's, it's almost too late. always too late. Yeah. yeah. And they were facing uncertainty uncertainty and dreading brain surgery. But she knew that the Lord was on her side. She had all these people rooting for her. And then weeks before the surgery she felt at peace with whatever outcome would come to be. Uh, she went to Dallas for the procedure. They found it was a very fragile and difficult aneurysm. Covered with blisters and on the verge of rupturing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but the doctor successfully clipped it. So she, if it had not been for the arrow, she probably would have died from a brain tumor yeah. or a stroke or a brain aneurysm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whoa. Um, but now she's doing great and has recovered from all that. And has... that's just beyond crazy. <laughs> like, what are the odds? That arrow ricocheted, went through all this shit, pierced her, like, just a little bit so it didn't hit any artery. And then, oh my gosh. That's crazy. No, she just felt like God had a plan for her. Yeah. And she was going to be okay, which she was. Yeah. So, well done. Well, dang Donna. Donna, I know. We got Donna and Donna. Oh, that is interesting. That's cute. My word. Well, those are great stories. Good times. Well, I'm so glad that Don... I'm sorry about his house, but I am very glad that he's alive. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like we've said last podcast, you can replace belongings, you can't replace a life. So That's right. We're very thankful for both of them to be alive. Donna's is a miracle story for sure. Oh, I did want to say something real quick. Oh, okay. How, you know, how she felt calm because she Mm. felt like... There was some okay. So when I was house sitting your house, oh gosh, <laughs> we went and saw a paranormal activity. Remember? Oh god, and I yes. was freaked out, and I was staying at your house all by myself with your dog, and I was just like Jesus, <laughs> which is like <sighs> bear. I love bear so much, but every now and again he would bark like In something was night. dying. Yeah. You know, you were on the verge of being murdered. Yeah. In the middle of the night, and it was the worst. Yes. Bear was... Uh, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> everyone kept saying that I'm going to walk in, and he's going to be standing on two feet and be like, welcome home, Caitlin. <laughs> and I don't know why, but that freaked me out. Like, oh my gosh, there's a demon in the house. But when I walked into your house, when they dropped me off, I felt a calming, like, <sighs> presence there. Like, I just felt calm there. I'm like, oh, this is not bad. And then I turn to the window where he's outside and he's standing on like this bench. So it looks like he was standing on two <laughs> feet. I'm like, jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but no, I'm just like, okay, no. But I still, yeah, I just felt really calm at your house. So you had a good like a good vibe, vibe there. there. Yeah. No, so. it's funny because when I looked for houses, I mean, I looked for a house for pr- almost a year. I think it was. And I was like, I'm done looking for fucking houses. Cause this yeah. is the worst. But because there were so many houses I would go into, and they would just have this funky vibe mm-hmm. that's like, well, I'm probably going to be murdered in this house. Yeah. This house has a door in the floor, so I'm going to find bodies later. Mm-hmm. You know, just all this shit. And then as soon as I walked into that house, I just, it felt so awesome yeah. to me. And that's how I actually feel about our new house. Yeah. Is, yeah, you know, even nice, yeah. though it's hella creepy and, you know, as yeah, a, basement, a basement and everything that yeah. I don't like, I still actually feel very safe there yeah. and very welcomed, mm. if you will. 
I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, we are actually going to go eat pizza. Hell yeah. Do some puzzle land. Do a puzzle and watch. We're finally watching the class action documentary. Oh my God. From I can't a few wait. episodes ago. I cannot wait. From the class action park. So Ugh. you should listen to that. Oh, almost like a bird. What? You know what uh, episode that was? Oh, it was like two episodes ago. Cause oh, it was, it was, yeah, two episodes ago. Episode 51, we talked about um, Action Park. So please many listen to the survival episode. stories yeah. from Action please, Park. Please uh, listen to the episode and also watch the documentary because we're about to watch it as well. Woo, woo, woo! And we will report about it uh, next time on our two-year anniversary episode. <gasps> Yay! Thank you guys so much for listening. And if you've been following us this whole time, we are so grateful that you've stuck around for this we long. We are. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it. So woo, woo! thank you so much. Bye, There's guys. so many woo-woos going. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.